In this video, we're going to see how to create a JSF project in Eclipse Oxygen. So the first thing we want to do is start Eclipse. I have Eclipse installed right at my C uh, Eclipse directory, so I'm just going to double click on Eclipse EXE and go ahead and launch the default workspace or whatever workspace I've chosen. Give it just a minute to finish that. And when Eclipse starts up, it takes us to this welcome screen. So we can either follow the prompts from here or just close that out, go straight to our project. And then I'm going to say new and dynamic web project. Now it's important that you have Eclipse JEE to do this step. So Eclipse Java Enterprise Edition. I'm going to call my project plant places. Okay. And uh, default location is fine. Note that if you're looking for your source code or any place where your application is deployed under Tomcat, it's going to be at this root location. So, so just make a note of that. Okay, target runtime, I have none, so I'm going to choose new runtime. And once again, if I take a look on my PC, I'm just going to verify that I do indeed have Tomcat 9 uh, unzipped right at my C drive. So Tomcat 9 for me is going to be the best choice. So I choose Tomcat 9. And next, uh, Tomcat installation directory, I'll navigate right back to my C drive where I have Tomcat 9 installed. And installed by Tomcat words means it's simply been unzipped. Um, okay, I'll choose finish. And I'm going to go with dynamic web module 3.0, configuration Java server faces 2.2 project. Everything else here looks good. So I choose next, uh, that looks good. I choose next and that looks good. We'll leave it at the default. Okay, user library, I'm going to hit the little uh, disk here. I'll say Mojara uh, 2.2 and next. And I accept the terms of this license agreement, of course, after reading this in great depth. And then finish. Now we get an error that says zip file is empty, which is a bit annoying. This started happening a couple of months ago. So what we have to do is manually create a library. We have to go out to a couple of links that I will add in the comments. One is this one right here and I'm going to get the JSF API 229 jar and then I'm going to do a save links as and I'll just put them somewhere where I'm going to remember so I might put it out see um, maybe make a libraries directory off of here uh, just a moment so I'll do new and I'll say just libs okay there we go and then I'll make a directory here called Mojara okay Okay, and I'm going to save this JSF API 229. Uh, one more page, I'm going to go to, and again, I'll put these links in the description. Uh, I'm going to go to this page. I'm going to get the JSF impl 229 jar, save as, and save it into the same location. So JSF API 229 and JSF impl as well. Grab those two. And what, what I believe happened on that previous page is they used to be available, the libraries used to be available, and Eclipse would try to download them automatically. The libraries are no longer available on that page, and I haven't found a good way to tell Eclipse to look somewhere else, uh, aside from what I'm about to do, which is click on this little library icon and just say, I'll create the libraries locally. So I click on the new button, and then I'll say Mojara, like so. And I'll say OK. And then I'm going to say Add External Jars. And once again, I'll navigate to that same path that we saw just a moment ago that I created. So C Libs and then Mojara. And then I will Shift and click and select both of these and say Apply and Close. So it took a bit of an extra step. And of course, tick the box here. It took a bit of an extra step, but nonetheless, we get those libraries included. And I would like to thank... Um, for helping me out, this website, uh, not, uh, Daniel, I guess it's Vist, uh, not quite sure how to pronounce that name, but nonetheless, uh, when I was stuck in class once trying to figure out why it was broken, this page was very handy in helping me out and showed me those links that I showed you. I'll include that in the description of this video as well. Nonetheless, uh, the reason why I want to set it up by going through the wizard as we see here is that it creates a set of files for me like faces config, uh, faces servlet, and the URL mapping pattern that it's going to put into WebXML. So creating the project through this sequence of steps is going to get us started off in the right manner. So I choose finish and we'll give it a minute for this to finish.
Okay, so I have a project here. We see it has a little world, so it's a web project, also a J, indicating it's a Java project. And so if I expand down web content, we'll see web XML. And so this is the file that it helped us to create in that last step. Did a little bit of mapping here, a few uh, niceties for us. Also the faces config file, which is essentially a configuration file for faces. Not a whole lot in that yet, but we will certainly grow this as the application continues to grow. Now a couple things I'm going to change in the web XML. First of all, the URL pattern. Uh, it's currently going to interpret anything in a faces subdirectory in the URL as a faces file. I'm going to add one more, which is XHTML. I'm going to tell it to interpret anything that's XHTML as faces. Okay, now also at the top of this file, I'm going, to, I'm going to create a welcome file list if I don't have one already. And I'm going to add to that welcome-file index.xhtml. It means when you come to this site, it's going to look for a file called index.xhtml first. Now I can add some alias as well if in case that index.html does not exist. I can say, okay, uh, look for these files then. So index.html uh, and then index.htm. The first match it finds is going to be the one that it uses. So I go ahead and choose save. And I can do, I, I, I want to test this out quickly, so I'm going to just do a quick and dirty uh, XHTML file. And sure, we'll keep it under web content and XHTML, uh, advanced, uh, yeah, nothing there that I want. So next, uh, let's see, we will go with, uh, we'll go with XHTML strict. How about that? That'll work just like so and finish. Okay, and I'll say welcome to plain places. Okay, and then welcome to, whoops, welcome to plantplaces.com again. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is create a new server, and we'll go with Tomcat9 again, and that looks good, and finish. Uh, you see I can simply move this over, and again choose finish. Uh, go ahead and make sure that I have saved my, ooh, uh, well, I don't like the name of that file. Let me, let me rename this. I didn't notice that I left that as new file, so we'll call this one index dot xhtml and choose OK. OK and save. And now we see I've added plant places to my brand new Tomcat server. So I'll quickly quickly hit the uh, start bar. Say sure we can allow access for this. Yep. OK let this run. Shouldn't take too long to start. There we go. Now let's see if our page comes up. I'll double click on the server here and we'll see that the port that it's using if I can just uh, click on that, it's looking for port 8080 for HTTP. So if I open a new browser page, whoops, just one second. If I open a new browser page and I go to localhost and then 8080, and then the name of my project, which is Plant Places, as you see right here. There we go. Welcome to Plant Places. We see that our application is up and running and looking good. And by the way, if you don't like that name Plant Places, double click on the server, click on Modules, choose Edit. You can give it any context root that you want right here. By default, it simply takes the name of our project and it makes that the context root. In other words, the thing that happens after 8080. So this is a look at how to create a new JSF project. In a separate video, I'll talk about converting an existing project to JSF. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.